G'day Virtual Pilots, it's Requiem. In this video, we're going to have an overview of the de Havilland Mosquito. It's a remarkable aircraft, being initially designed for the reconnaissance and bomber role in 1940, then eventually evolving into a true multi-role fighter bomber aircraft, taking part in some incredible missions. One of these was a raid on Amiens Prison in February 1944, which 18 mosquitoes took part in, in order to destroy the prison's walls and some buildings there. This attack was designed to create an escape opportunity for the POWs there, with around 250 escaping out of over 800 imprisoned. This was just one of several famous exploits during the mosquito's history. This particular mosquito we have in DCS is the FB Mark VI, a fighter bomber version, powered by two Rolls-Royce Merlin 25 engines, providing 1600 horsepower each. Each engine also has a three-bladed hydromatic propeller on it, which rotates clockwise and creates left-turning tendencies. So remember to account for this or your flight will end up very short. The Merlin also comes with a supercharger and it has two positions, mod or auto. In mod, the Merlin 25 will maintain the low gear at all altitudes, while switching to auto will allow high gear to engage beginning around 7,000 feet. Installed on the engine, we have several elements to help control systems for oil and coolant, electrics, pneumatics and hydraulics. There are also fire extinguishers available for the engines in case of an engine fire, but you'll need to act fast if you want to have a chance of putting it out. When your engine does happen to suffer damage or need a shutdown though, because it is a multi-engine airplane, Mosquito has the ability to feather a propeller in this situation. This will lay to improve performance enough for a safe landing even when the critical engine is the one that's affected. The strongest engines in the world are not going to help if your airframe is not well designed though. This is where the Mosquito came through in spades. Arguably the most famous aspect of the Mosquito is its construction. Around this time most airplanes were in all metal construction but Sir de Havilland decided to make the Mosquito mostly out of the large supply of balsa and birch wood held together by cold water glue. The wings were constructed in one piece, but the fuselage was built in two halves, so internal equipment could be installed and then these halves were assembled together later. This wooden construction created a relatively lighter and cleaner airplane aerodynamically because of the lack of rivets and seams along its surface giving the Mosquito the ability to fly at speeds of over 400 miles an hour at a service altitude of 32,000 feet. These elements combined with its many combat successes led to it being known as the Wooden Wonder. Although the Mosquito is a multi-crew airplane of two people, there was no defensive armament as tests with mock turrets had shown there was too much drag on the airframe. The second crew member is the navigator, who performs navigation, but also manages other duties such as the weapons, radio set, and general systems management of the airplane while acting as a second set of eyes during a flight. It can be a high workload in a mosquito cockpit, so having the navigator on board is a great advantage. Due to the ample internal space inside the wings, there was some flexibility in the mosquito's fuel system design. So there are four outer tanks in the wings, totaling 116 gallons, along with the main supply of fuel, consisting of four inner wing tanks, totaling 286 gallons, and there are two center tanks, totaling 50 gallons. One downside to the outer tanks is that there is no cross-feed available, so if you lose an engine, then fuel in those outer tanks supplying that engine is then unusable. Fuel pressure for many of these tanks drops below 3 pounds per square inch, the fuel pressure warning lights will illuminate. The fuel cocks in the Mosquito allows selecting either source as needed for each engine. And in order to keep the fuel tanks pressurised, the pressure venting cock should be on, unless you're using the long range tank. This pressurising also prevents the fuel tank self-sealing properly during emergencies, so it should also be turned off in this situation as well. A long range tank carrying 63 gallons could also be installed inside the fuselage, and in order to supply both engines with fuel from it, you need to turn the immersed fuel pump switch on with the fuel cock in main supply. This tank also has a specific light indicating when it is low on fuel. On the fuel gauges, the aft gauge shows the outer wing tank's level, 
The center gauge shows both center tanks and the long range tanks level and the forward gauge shows the inner wings tank level. The fuel mixture only has a rich or a weak setting and is controlled automatically for the engines via boost pressure. But there are cutout controls in the fuel selectors which should be pulled out to stop the engines during a shutdown. Additional drop tanks, carrying 50 or 100 gallons each, could also be installed under the wings to increase range even further. So while using fuel from these drop tanks, the selector should be in outer tanks, with the fuel transfer cock to the on position. However, these drop tanks should only be used when the outer tanks are almost empty, otherwise fuel will be lost and then vented outside the airplane. And when desired, these tanks can be jettisoned from the wings to decrease drag. These fuel options can give the Mosquito a range of over 1500 miles. On the left engine, there's an air compressor which charges an air bottle, and this air is used to operate the brakes, guns, and other pneumoelectric valves. So if you lose the left engine, you'll no longer be able to charge the bottle and you'll lose air pressure, but you'll be able to retain some brake pressure thanks to a pressure valve which closes. Each engine contains a self-sealing tank with 15 gallons of oil in its nacelle while oil temperature cannot be controlled manually. Instead, there are electro-pneumatically operated radiator shutters that control both oil and coolant temperature automatically using a two-way switch in the cockpit. A hydraulic pump in each engine supplies the pressure needed to normally operate the undercarriage and tail wheel, flaps, and the bomb bay doors. If one hydraulic pump is inoperative, then these items are still functional, but because of the reduced pressure, they will operate at a slower rate. As an additional backup, there is a manual hydraulic hand pump beneath the pilot seat that can lower the undercarriage in about 4 minutes. The 24 volt DC electrical system is powered by a generator on the right engine, while an alternator on the left engine provides the AC power for the radio equipment. But if the generator is not supplying enough power, then a warning light illuminates. Near the trailing edge of the wing on the left side of the fuselage is a ground starter battery connection. The Mosquito was equipped with standard exterior navigation lights, but in addition to those, there are restricted intensity or resin lights, and these are used as a formation light visible only to an airplane almost directly behind them. There are also three identification lights along the bottom of the fuselage, coloured red, green and amber. And these can be turned on to identify themselves as friendlies, or even to send Morse code messages using a switch. Landing lights are also available, and these will extend underneath the wings when they're in use. For the interior lighting, there are floodlights and UV lights, as well as a dome light behind the pilot. This will help with cockpit visibility at night when it's needed. Because the Mosquito is a tail dragger, it has two main landing gears and a tail wheel. The landing gear is fully retractable, with each main landing gear retracting inside the respective engine nacelle, but the tail wheel will still be visible. The gear indicator lights will indicate the position of the main wheels, but not the tail wheels. Operating the landing gear will be a little bit different to what you're used to, as it has a safety catch which must be released before you raise the landing gear handle. And the landing gear handle will automatically return to its neutral position whenever the landing gear has finished being raised or retracted. To improve situational awareness, there's a warning horn installed and this will sound off whenever the gear is not extended properly and the throttle is less than a quarter open. The Mosquito has manual flight controls for the rudder, elevator and ailerons with controllable trim tabs for each surface. With a power off stall speed of about 100 miles an hour and a power on stall speed of about 90 miles an hour, it's a maneuverable airplane thanks to the effectiveness and responsiveness of the controls but using sharp rudder inputs at high speeds should be avoided. Putting the airplane into a spin deliberately is possible, but it's not recommended. If you do happen to get into a spin, then standard recovery procedures will work just fine. Arguably, the most dangerous aspect of flying a Mosquito could be during its takeoff or a go around. Engine failures in these phases of flight were not uncommon at the time. And once you get airborne, accelerating to the minimum safety speed of 170 miles an hour is critical. The common procedure would actually be to raise the landing gear to prevent overrunning the end of the runway. 
The flaps are hydraulically controlled and like the landing gear, they have a safety catch which needs to be released before extending them. The maximum extension of these flaps is 45 degrees even though the gauge shows up to 70 degrees. And here we can see the four flaps of the Mosquito in the exterior view along with their full extension. The brakes are pneumatically controlled by a single lever on the control column. If you needed to set the parking brake, you would hold the lever and engage the wheel brake lock to maintain brake pressure after the brake lever is released. But differential braking can be achieved by moving the rudder pedals while actively holding the brake lever. And along with using differential power, you can perform tighter turns if you need to. It's especially important to remember to check brake pressure before landing if you suffered damage or else you risk overrunning the field or runway without that pressure. If that happens, you'll need to react quickly and raise the gear in order to stop as quickly as possible. The Mosquito has the ability to fly a beam approach. And what this means is that you can essentially fly a localizer approach into an airport because you're only going to receive lateral guidance. But using this system can get you down safely when you're flying in inclement weather. The Mosquito armament consists of four 303 machine guns in the nose and four 20mm cannons in the bottom of the fuselage. The gun sight used to aim is an RAF Mark II fixed sight. And this has an ability to make adjustments to the airplane's wingspan and range depending on what you're shooting at. So when you're not attacking ground targets, it is perfectly capable of shooting enemy planes down if you get the sights. Internally, the Mosquito can carry two 250-pound or 500-pound bombs, which are controlled using a weapons panel behind the Perspex barrier. And these can have instantaneous fuses or a delayed fuse up to 11 seconds to make low-level attacks safer. And if you have a human navigator, then they can manage this for you. Additional bombs or rocket projectiles can be used externally under the wings in place of the drop tanks. But when carrying internal bombs, there is a bomb bay door which must be opened. Whether it's against ships, vehicles or buildings, these weapons options combined with the Mosquito's speed allow it to be an excellent ground attack aircraft with high survivability. The best scenario for Mosquito to attack is when it's fast, low and around less than ideal weather conditions. The de Havilland Mosquito is one of the truly iconic aircraft of World War II which you will love to fly thanks to its unique design and mission capabilities. And that's something we're going to learn how to do in the next few videos. So until then, remember to fly safe and check six.